Welcome to this uh, Europe is here 2022. I'm Nicolas Menvaux from uh, Besançon, France, and I'm glad to share this session with Dr. Enrique Gutierrez from Madrid. This session will be dedicated to the prime class uh, study evaluating the impact of coronary artery disease in aortic stenosis patients. Thank you very much, Professor Manavo. It's a pleasure to be here. So what is your view on the current indications to manage patients with coronary artery disease and aortic stenosis? Well, first of all, it's important to know that coronary artery disease is the most common comorbidity in aortic stenosis patients and its prevalence increases with age. Does it impact prognosis? Definitely yes. The severity of coronary artery disease is associated with worse outcomes after TAVI. And in this cohort of 445 patients with CV aortic stenosis undergoing TAVI, you can see that those with a syntax score higher than 22 uh, received less complete revascularization and had a higher risk of uh, cardiovascular death, stroke, or MI than patients with no coronary artery disease or low syntax uh, score. In this multicenter observational study, patients undergoing PCI in the workup of pre-TAVI frequently had coronary uh, complex lesions with multivessel disease. The PCI was successful in most cases uh, with a very low rate of target lesion failure. However, Overall MACE occurred in about one third of patients with incomplete revascularization determined and associated with an increased risk. Therefore, determining the optimal revascularization strategy likely has a major prognostic impact in these uh, patients. There is little retrospective data available regarding the impact of physiological guidance of revascularization in patients with aortic stenosis. And in this match comparison from a small cohort of aortic stenosis patients, FFR made it possible to downgrade the number of diseased vessels without increasing the adverse event rates when compared with angiography alone. In this retrospective observational study of patients undergoing TAVI, Fractional flow reserve guided revascularization was associated with an improved even free survival at 24 months compared with angiography guided revascularization. Now, the question is what is the optimal strategy for evaluating epicardial coronary stenosis in the setting of aortic stenosis? In other words, how reliable is FFR in aortic stenosis patients? The complex interplay between stenotic valve, elevated left ventricular and diastolic pressure, myocardial hypertrophy, and negative remodeling of the coronary microcirculation may blunt the response to adenosine and consequently the achievement of maximal hyperemia. These factors may theoretically reduce the reliability of fractional flow reserve in aortic stenosis patients, causing a possible underestimation of the true ischemic significance of a given coronary lesion. TAVI acutely improves the response to hyperemic stimuli, which is responsible for a significant decrease in fractional flow reserve following TAVI. This appears to make FFR assessment less suitable for patients with severe aortic stenosis. Conversely, resting diastolic flow is not influenced by the presence of severe aortic stenosis and appears to be more appropriate for this patient population. Nevertheless, additional prospective data is required to confirm this observation, and the prime class study is expected to do so. Dr. Gutierrez, what are the objectives and the design of the primary class study, please? The problem with aortic stenosis is that the conditions of flow and pressure inside the coronary arteries are different than in normal um, stable coronary artery disease. The pressure in the LV is higher. There's a difference in pressure between LV and aorta, and there's a, a larger mass of myocardium. So this changes everything. There are studies that have shown that hyperemic flow is dec decreased in aortic stenosis, and this is reversible after tower. And the same can happen with uh, resting flow, but it seems to be much less important with resting flow than with hyperemic flow. For these reasons, there's a theoretical concern that 
FFR can be inaccurate when you do it in, uh, on a patient with aortic stenosis. So that some a minority of, of lesions that we measure with FFR before TAVR can become uh, positive uh, after TAVR while they were negative uh, in the first place. The same can happen with IFR, but it seems to go both ways so that the net change uh, in IFR in, uh, measured in several patients tends to be zero, while uh, with FFR, uh, it, tends to, it tends to be negative. For these reasons, for these inaccuracies of physiology, uh, the European guidelines recommend that we use angiography to decide uh, which lesions to revascularize in patients with aortic stenosis. This is even, although there are no actual studies, there's no evidence that shows that angiography is better than physiology in this context. So what we are going to do in the prime class study is take a look at this and see if physiology, even if slightly inaccurate, is a better predictor of ischemia than angiography in patients with aortic stenosis. There are five uh, centers in Spain enrolling in the prime class study. So for the study, we're going to use Opsons DPR as the main measurement of ischemia. DPR is the ratio of pressures during the whole of the diastole, and it has a very good correlation with IFR. We'll be using OptoWire 3 by Opsons because it's a wire that has some features that make it attractive for this study. It has a very resistant nitinol core, it has optical transmission of the, of the signal, it has a very low drift, and it has very good steerability. So I think uh, it's going to help us uh, to the study better. And what we're going to do is we're going to measure, we're going to do angiography immediately before the TAVR, and then we'll do DPR and FFR. Then we'll do the TAVR, and after the TAVR, we'll repeat for all measurements. The reference for ischemic lesions will be post-TAVR FFR. And against post-TAVR FFR, we'll compare all the other ones. And what we're going to do is estimate the sensitivity, specificity, negative and positive predictive values and accuracy for pre tavr DPR and compare it to the same measurements for angiography and FFR. The aim of the study is to show that even if there's a slight inaccuracy in physiology, it will always be better than angiography to predict ischemic lesions in patients with aortic stenosis. Thank you, Enrique. So to summarize this session, why is the prime class study needed? Because this is an area with many unanswered questions regarding the optimal strategy for assessing and managing epicardial coronary stenosis in the setting of aortic stenosis and aortic valve replacement. Patients with aortic stenosis and coronary artery disease present a diagnostic and therapeutic challenge. Both aortic stenosis and coronary artery disease affect coronary hemodynamic status, provoke similar symptoms, and their respective treatments can have an impact on both disease. Decisions regarding coronary revascularization should be based on understanding this complex relationship using appropriate coronary assessment. In particular, the prime class study should confirm whether or not resting indices of coronary stenosis severity are more appropriate for this patient population.